Right over the bed, over the bed. Nigga, I gotta be safe. Let's get to the sports talk. Back to 06, and I was at Purdue, both Purdue guys, you know, pretty smart. I was waiting for that to happen. Back in 2006, I get drafted to the Saints. You're coming in, um, starting a new new thing here with Sean coming in, and we go to Millsaps College. Remember Millsaps? <laughs> yes, right? I do. So our first practice, we walk out to the grass, and the field had like a slant, like a, like a, a bad crown. It was like higher in the one end zone, lower. So we didn't practice one day on grass. It was on turf. Tell everybody a little bit about the temperatures at Millsap College on turf every single day. Well, that was that was that was pre CBA, right? So <laughs> I remember those days. Oh boy! I, I remember two days for the first 15 straight days before we had, I think, a day off, right? Yeah. And it was full pads every day, and it was, it felt like it was a thousand degrees, and the insane. grass was like. U.S. Open rough. I mean, it was like, <laughs> you know, it was like it was trudging through like the jungle, right? You take this weather any day oh, of the week that Oh, listen, and I'm a court. It's, it's crazy how Drew Brees' career did change when he went to Saints with Sean Payton. That was a good dynamic duel right there. The the match up with each other. They they worked perfectly with each other. Like San Diego had a chance to keep Dubreeze there, but they let him go to the Saints. And look how he changed that organization like that. You know, the Saints, they still they got one Super Bowl in their organization, but he didn't change so much and made this team be top team in a division since he since he got to New Orleans. And they already been a relevant team because of Drew Brees and Sean Payton, brilliant minds. How they just, how they had this, this organization going, and it is just like it was just a good combination to get together. In that 06, when him and Sean Payton uh, came together, and they do another change the orders all the way around. We're back. I mean, this guy's over here hitting, having to actually. <laughs> Do something. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> my skin is permanently different from the, the just the baking that happened to me yeah, every day. Yeah. It was like insane how hot it was. But it was a great experience. I mean, I had a cup of coffee with the Saints, but I can tell you, him as a teammate, one of the best, if not the best, at preparing and understanding, you know, what it takes. And I've been lucky enough to play with two of them. You know, you know yourself with Tom. It was just amazing to be with you guys. The evolution of our offense from 06 until now. It was funny. Last year, we actually went back and looked at an 06 call sheet, and it was so simple. So, like, just day one base, like, training camp offense or OTA offense. And now I look at the call sheet, and it's like, gosh, how did we get here? But it's just this evolution, right? I mean, you have to stay ahead of the curve, and Sean is so creative. And that's why Sean Payton is a dominant coach, because he adapted in both eras. And that's why New Orleans continue being a top team because he adapted his system as the era moved on. And that's why his play caller ain't get stale because he know how to adapt. From 06 to now, he all the way adapt everything. And now, look at what New Orleans is doing because they coach know how to adapt with the era. And then he have a Hall of Fame quarterback that's running it for so long. And that's why this team's successful because you have a coach that's willing to get with the program, willing to adapt, to be able to keep up with the era. He's got such an aggressive mindset, which I love. And our communication throughout the week is such where I feel like I can anticipate the calls, right? Can I, I can anticipate what's coming. I know the situation he wants to call in. I know why we're calling it. And so when, when I'm able to anticipate that, it, it's almost like he's he's so in my head, I'm so in his head that we're just, we're kind of one out there working together. Um, and then there's also those times during the week, it's like, hey, coach, I don't like that. That's out. Or explain this further to me. Or what's your vision for this? And it's, it, it's um, I mean, it, it, it's a great working relationship. Drew, to, in, in your words, the offseason came a little sooner than you'd like. But now that it is here, there's been a lot of questions about your future and what you decide to do. Do you have a timetable for a decision? No, not really. I mean, I, I wanted to give I wanted to give it at least a, a few weeks, months, uh, postseason. 
um, the Saints gonna probably bring him back for one year or two. Cause after a while, when he really done, they really need to find another guy. Cause Breeze ain't gonna be there for long. Who's gonna be that guy to run Sean Payton offense for the near future? Cause once he retire or the Saints move on for him and wanna go younger at the quarterback position. Who is they going to replace him with? Because that's going to be a big shoes to fill in New Orleans. They still have to figure out who will be the next quarterback once he's done. That's the one thing they need to address as well. Like, who will be the next guy at the breeze? Just to take a deep breath and decompress a little bit and get some time with the family and, and then just reassess. What are the factors when you do make a decision and you sit down and you sort of put it all out there and say yes or no? What are, what are the factors, the things that are important to you and your family? Well, the most important thing is this time with my family, <laughs> right? And so that's why, you know, taking that time just to be with them and even talk to them about it. Um, you know, I think that that's, that's something uh, will, that'll be a, a shared decision, you know, amongst the family. But I know this. I know my boys love coming coming to work with dad. If they, can, <laughs> if they have a vote. You know, the yeah, if they had a vote, dad would play forever. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis. The best stuff in the shits in the safe. Got me a spot out the way. Nigga just trying to be safe.